Hi guys! Recently I got a request to make a video about mirror stamping. So in this video I will show you two ways that I tend to do that. But also at the same time I thought to inspire you to make some last moment Valentine's cards. For both of these cards I will use uh, this uh, paper pack from Art by Marlene. It has both white and black paper included. And for the first card I will use this uh, stamp set called A Lot of Birds. But I will use only one bird to stamp both of my images. I won't stamp directly on my card, instead I will use this uh, Canson mixed media paper. As I plan to give my bird some dimension with uh, 3D foam tape, but with this technique you can stamp directly on your card. For stamping I will use Versafine uh, Onyx Black Ink. I chose this ink for two reasons. First, as it gives really crisp uh, black image, it is permanent, but also because it has a bit uh, slower drying time, which is perfect for the mirror stamping technique that I will show you. So here we have my first bird, but now I need another one which will be facing this one directly. So I am taking my gel plate, this is uh, the smallest one that I have, as it is more practical to work with, but you can use whichever size of gel plate that you have. And I am stamping my image directly on it. Since Versafine ink takes some time to dry, I have the time to transfer my image on the paper. As the gel plate is really transparent, you can really take your time and aim the direction and position of your bird. Even though in this case it didn't matter for me, I still wanted to show you. Now of course this image won't be as vibrant as crisp as the directly stamped image, but there are many ways to solve that and it is really not a big problem. The, what is important is that we have nice outline of our image. Of course you can first reinforce your lines, but this time I decided to first to do some coloring. You can choose whatever coloring medium you prefer, though I chose to work with Prisma colors. And now you can see my image fully colored, so now it is time to reinforce those lines. Ideally for this I would use either Posca marker in black color or Pigma Micron pens like I am doing here. Here, as you can see, I brought out my whole collection of my Pigma Microns because I am variating between the thickness of lines. For instance, for reinforcing the basic shape of the bird, I am using a 08, but for the inner lines of the wings, I am using 01 Pigma Micron pen. I think variating between thickness of lines on an image really contributes to the complete look. It, is, uh, it looks nicer, but of course it is not necessary to pay uh, so much detail to tiny things like that. And here you can see both of my birds nicely colored and fussy cut, so it is time to start working on that background. This time I wanted to create a simpler background because the point of this video was anyway focusing on the mirror stamping technique. But as you will see, I still couldn't resist adding some details to my background. Anyway, first I'm starting with Distress Oxides. The colors that I have chosen to work with are Mermaid Lagoon and Salvaged Patina. And I am applying them directly on a piece of acetate. Of course, I spray some water on that acetate and smudge in the color on my background. This is such a fun technique and I honestly don't know why I don't do it more often. Oh, and perhaps, probably, you can see that there is a certain pattern on my background. Honestly, I have no idea how did that happen. It looks like a piece of a uh, bird, the body of the bird, and I have no idea how that happened. But anyway, let's move on. This is the stencil from this year's advent calendar from Art by Merlin, day 14. And now I will actually use it for stamping. Using it the regular way, as I guess stencils were meant to be used, would give really pretty results as well, but anyway, I guess I just have to complicate stuff. 
but of course this gives a little bit different vibe and at the end I was really happy with the result. Now since I had a little bit of that uh, blue color on my craft mat, I decided to use it to add just a couple of splatters. And then I just couldn't stop playing so I decided to add a little bit of a darker grey color to the circles from the stencil as that gives just a little bit feeling of dimension. Sometimes I just can't stop myself with adding details. As you will see here once again, I will use these uh, rub-ons from Stamperia, their Create Happiness collection. And the idea was to add just a little bit more interest to that uh, background. It turned out uh, very subtle, but still it can really be noticed in life. Anyway, if nothing else, working with rub-ons is just plainly fun. Okay, now the background was done and it was time to assemble my card and add a sentiment. The sentiment that I chose comes from my favorite things and it is called 100% Lovable. It is an older stamp set, but it has so many little sentiments that are just perfect for Valentine's. Anyway, I didn't want to bore you with stamping but I just felt like I needed a couple of uh, black droplets, splatters, to balance out my quote and later on you will see black frame. So I didn't cover my entire background with it, I just put a couple of splatters in two corners of my card and here it is how it looks finally. I stamped those two hearts as well which come from the same stamp set as the quote. Now let's move on to the second card. The stamp set that I'm using is called Party Elephant. But now this is really important what's in my hand, a lot of you probably know it. It is a craft silicone mat from Ranger. And this is what I am going to use for mirror stamping technique. And this is just a tip for those of you who perhaps don't own gel plate. I used this technique before I had gel plates. Both techniques are equally good, I guess. I wouldn't choose one over another, I just use what is uh, at my hand at the moment. Anyway, once again I'm using VersaFine ink. Here just be a little bit careful to stamp better than I did. But if you didn't manage, here as you can see you can easily clean your craft mat and try again. Simple as that. So I will try once again. And once again I didn't stamp perfectly, but honestly that didn't bother me. I will draw in those missing lines when anyway I go over the overall shape of my stamped image, transferred image. Now gently press that uh, piece of cardstock and massage it in so the image uh, transfers better. Just be careful so your the cardstock doesn't slide. And ta-da! We have a mirror transferred image. If you are really in a pinch, this technique would be done with acetate as well, but there is so much opportunity for making mistakes there as acetate is a really smooth surface and your ink can slide, your card stock can slide, but you know, it is doable if you really don't have any other option. Anyway, now I wanted to stamp my other elephant, but I wanted to modify it a bit, didn't want to be two exactly same elephants, so I'm masking that crown and the flower. Honestly, just for fun. And as you will see, instead of flower, I will draw a heart, like one of the elephant is holding a little heart, because I just enjoy doing some small fun details like that. Now it was time to fix those missing lines and reinforce those which are not perfectly crisp from uh, mirror transferring and also draw in that cute little heart. Of course, once again, as you can see, I'm using Pigma Micron for doing this kind of line work. 
And after a little bit of work, we have two cute elephants. And can you guess which one of them was mirror transferred? Take a guess. And the answer is the turquoise one. Anyway, the point is, after you reinforce your lines, the image really looks perfect. But now let's focus our attention to creating some nice background for these two cuties. I decided to give them a little hill on which they can stand on. But first I wanted to measure the space for the sentiment. I was a little bit thinking which one to use, but I decided to go with the same one that I used uh, for the previous card. I will decide on the location where I would like to approximately place it. And according to that, I will try to draw a little hill. For coloring my background, I will use a Studio Light and Art by Marlene watercolor set. I didn't do any kind of fancy coloring techniques, I just chose two shades of uh, green color and colored the hill and with blue color I colored a little bit of sky. Here you can see my first layers of color, but uh, to add more dimension to the hill I decided to add a little bit of darker color, but this time using Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxiding. Adding different shades of a color really helps your image look not so flat, and it helps even to go a little bit even in a contrast between the different shades of the same color. Here I will put a neon green, almost yellow, on top of my hill as if the light is shining there. And you can already see how my hill looks more dimensional compared to when it had only one flat layer of watercolor. This time I decided to heat emboss my quote. So here what you can see I am applying a thin layer of baby powder. Not my favorite tool for doing this, you can see I'm struggling a bit. But never mind, the point is achieved. And for embossing I will use Versafine ink in onyx black color and clear embossing powder. Once again I felt like I missed a little bit more of black color to balance out the weight which that sentiment gave. So I will again use Windsor & Newton Black Indian ink to do so by adding uh, some little splatters. From all the watercolors that I used for coloring my background my paper became quite wavy. So to adhere it to my black uh, background I will use this double sided uh, sticky tape. 
because it adds a little bit more of a firmness to the paper compared to the simple liquid glue. But I will add still a little bit of liquid glue, not because I thought that this uh, double-sided tape won't hold my paper, but uh, really to help uh, keep my paper really flat. The liquid glue that I used in this video is a sticky multi-glue from Art by Marlene. And here it is, my background is laying really nicely flat on the black background. So now time to adhere my elephants and that's it! I really hope I managed to show you these techniques clearly. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. Of course, thank you for watching my video and have a nice crafty day! Bye!